My 23F sister, 25F, and friends, 20s, talked about how I'm not good enough for my boyfriend, 25M. They don't know I heard and I don't know what to do. Firstly, my sister and this group of friends are what I would consider my closest friends. I love this girls to death. I literally tried to donate a kidney for one of them. I am 100% heartbroken. My BF is an amazing guy, kind, funny, smart as hell and pretty much a model. He's just gorgeous and asexual. This isn't a problem to me and we worked it out. He's also very open to it and everyone knows, which I entirely support. We were supposed to hang out a week ago but after spending about half an hour his job called him and he had to leave. This didn't bother me a lot BC I had a killer headache and went home. My sister and I share an apartment to save money and we have a year long lease so I guess I'm screwed. Long story short, I closed my door, didn't light up and got a nap. Next thing I know I wake up to my sister voice. She and those friends were at our house. From what I heard they were going to a club and were drinking a bit slash waiting for the others. I didn't get up BC I was lazy and would have to put pants. Then they started talking about me. I'm not proud but I was curious. They were talking about how they couldn't believe I was dating my BF. How he was too good for me. How I was too ugly to get a guy like him. My sister then started telling how being asexual is obviously an excuse to not have intimacy with me. I'm not pretty and while it does makes me insecure I know I have other good characteristics but it was very hard hearing that. They also made fun of my learning disability, they kaye the R word, which I can't even fudging write it, that I wasn't even financially stable, made fun of my job. They said I had to beg to be fudged. All of my friends laughed and all of them shit talked me. I was crying pretty hard at that point. They left and I didn't know what to do. I went to bed and basically made myself scarce this week. I get up earlier, get home later, or stay at my BF. I have answered their messages, but was somewhat cold. I know I have to talk with them, even if it's to just cut off contact, but I can't open my mouth right now. I feel so ashamed and sad. My BF is also worried, but I can't get what they said from my head. I know it's not true and my BF is asexual, but I feel like I'm not worth being with him. My sister is my best friend. I fucking told her how I feel too ugly and stupid to be with him. I showed her our messages, and we spoke about his asexuality. I love her so much it hurts. I can't stand looking at her knowing she was saying those on my back, and that none of my friends said anything. I just don't know what to do. I could break my lease, I guess, even though it would be very expensive, but I don't know how to say why I'm doing it, or how I can face them. I don't know if I should tell my BF. TLDR. My sister and friends mocked me for not being good enough for my BF. They don't know I heard them, and I don't know what to do. Edit. I can't begin to explain how much you guys rock. Thank you so much for all the advice, support, and tough love. It has truly helped me and it warms my heart T.I. see so many people taking their time to write to a stranger on the internet. I'm trying to respond to all the comments, but if I haven't please know I have read it and and considered. I promise I will talk with my boyfriend tomorrow. We are going to his place and I'll probably just show him this post. Edit 2. Hey guys again, thank you so much for all the messages and well wishes. It truly made a moment of pain more bearable, and it made me feel better to know there are so many of those who care. I really need to sleep now, but will do my best to respond to the comments tomorrow. Thanks everyone. Update 1. Hey everyone, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for the messages and comments on my last post. It truly helped me get off the bed and face the day. I showed my BF the last post because I just didn't know how I could say it. He was very sad and disappointed, but being asexual he has had his fair number of assholes but he mostly felt angry for me and agreed with the majority of advices that I should confront her. We decided a letter would be the best choice since I actually write a lot of letters and it's not direct confrontation. I like writing letters for moments, like letters for when the person is sad, happy, angry, scared, ECT. So I do have some technique but this was, with no doubt, the hardest things I ever wrote. I decided to go for the simple and blunt. Told her I heard what they said about me and while I was willing to work on our relationship, I needed distance from her and this whole situation. I talked with my landlord and she was super sweet and had no problem breaking the lease. I offered to find someone to take up my place but apparently she has someone that could use the room so that's cool. I intended to pack and leave the letter on her bed but she came home early and caught me. I basically said fuck it to myself and told her I heard them saying I wasn't good enough and calling me names. First she tried to deny, which I wasn't having it, then she tried to justify and say I was overreacting but I just stared at her. Then she finally started to apologize and cry. At that moment I actually thought we might be able to save the relationship, but then she started making herself the victim. The main points were. 1. I just can't understand how hard it is to be pretty, not even kidding. 2. I don't understand how she feels BC I'm used at not being the best. 3. 
It's not fair I get a gorgeous BF, who is completely out of my league while she's single. For she feels embarrassed when we go out together, and she has to tell people that my BF is actually mine, not hers. 5. She knows asexuality doesn't exist, and we're doing this just for attention. I just kind of froze. I wish I had said something but I couldn't open my mouth. She then said she was going out to recover from our traumatic conversation, and left. I just packed the rest of my things and left the letters on her bed. I'm currently at my BF's place, but I'm looking for a free room that is not super far from my job. I also wrote and sent letters to my friends, A, and then blocked their social media slash contacts. I'm certain they'll find a way to approach me as we work close, but I can't give a fuck. Besides all of that, last Friday I had dinner with my parents, I gave them an edited version of what happened, BC I don't want to talk about my sex life, and that I broke the lease slash blocked my friends. They said I shouldn't be angry BC it was true, and that the first time they met my BF they thought I was playing a prank. My dad then started saying I was being selfish by breaking the lease and, I shit you not, betraying my sister trust and that you don't do this with family. So yeah, I've been ignoring them since this happened, as well as my sister. Overall, I'm fine. I actually feel more tired than angry or sad. TLDR. Talked with my BF, it went well. Talked with my sister, didn't go well. Moved out. Talked with my parents, they said I'm selfish. Relevant comments. Commenter. This is a little bit off topic, but I'm curious as to how your relationship dynamic works with your boyfriend. I don't know too much about asexuality slash you mentioned you have a disability. So if it isn't too personal for me to ask, how does your relationship work? How do you go about a cuddle life? I don't mean to be offensive or nosy so apologies in advance, I'm just curious, smiley face. Opie, don't worry. Asexuality is a scale, like the hetero slash gay. At one side you have the asexual and on the other the allosexual. Between you have different shades of gray. Some people don't feel sexual attraction but don't really care about having cuddles if it makes their partners happy. Some really don't want to do it. Some only feel sexual attraction for those they have an emotional connection. It's a very diverse community. As for the obstacles of dating an asexual man, I guess it mostly falls into what you consider a deal breaker. What are your needs? ECT. I can live without intimacy. Again, it's about compromise. There are other things in my relationship that are more important to me than sex and they are being met so I'm happy. I guess it just goes down to, if you can't date someone without intimacy, that's okay. If you can, that's okay too. The only wrong thing is to start shitting rules. Opie on if her parents always treated her sister as the golden child. I checked it out some of the links people sent me and I believe they did. Things like having to give her my clothes if she liked them, or having to eat her food if she didn't want anymore. I don't know. I can see how some of the things they did were terrible, but saying they were abusive sounds too extreme. Update 2. Hey everyone. I honestly didn't think I'd be back here with an update, but I guess things keep getting weirder. So buckle up, because I barely believe this myself. After I moved out and went semi-no contact with my parents and sister, I really thought the worst was over. My focus was just finding my footing, maybe even enjoying the peace and quiet for once. But apparently, that was too much to ask for. About a week after the whole debacle, I got a text from my sister. It was all caps, we need T.O. talk. I didn't reply because, honestly, I was over it. But the next day, she was waiting outside my work. She looked, frazzled, messy bun, puffy eyes, the whole, I've been crying in my car for an hour, vibe. Against my better judgment, I agreed to talk. We went to a nearby cafe, and she started spilling. She told me she'd been reflecting, and then she dropped a bombshell. Turns out, she had recently started seeing a guy a co-worker of hers. A guy she apparently told all about my boyfriend's looks, asexuality, and our relationship. The kicker? Her new guy now wants to meet my boyfriend because he thinks he's just a myth my sister made up. She's convinced she needs me to clear her name. I laugh because, seriously, the audacity. I told her to tell him the truth or deal with it herself. But then she started tearing up, saying this guy is so different and understands her in ways no one ever has but he thinks she's delusional for believing in a perfect asexual boyfriend that her sister, me, somehow landed. I was completely baffled. I told her to get over it and stood up to leave, but she grabbed my arm and said, I really need you to do this for me. This guy is everything. I pulled my arm back, looked her in the eye, and said, he's not my problem. I walked out, half expecting her to start screaming or something, but she just sat there looking miserable. And for once, I didn't feel bad. Since then, I've blocked her number and moved into a room I found with a great roommate who has a cat. My sister tried emailing me, who even uses email to reach people these days, saying that I'm ruining her life and that she never thought I'd stoop this low. I didn't respond, but then my parents got involved. 
My mom left a voicemail saying I should help my sister through this difficult time. My dad, in true form, accused me of tearing the family apart for the sake of my ego. Meanwhile, my boyfriend and I have been stronger than ever. He thinks the whole situation is absurd and keeps asking if he should go clear his existence just to get my family to back off. But honestly, we've both agreed it's better if he stays as far from this mess as possible. I don't know where things will go from here. Part of me wonders if cutting off my entire family is too drastic. But then I think about the years I spent bending over backward for them, and I wonder why I even care. Tieldrar, sister thinks I'm ruining her love life by not introducing my boyfriend to her new guy, who doesn't believe my boyfriend exists. Family thinks I'm being selfish. Current status. Over it. But they're not letting me go that easy. Update 3. Alright, so things got even wilder, and at this point, I'm just riding the train because, honestly, what else can I do? Since I last wrote, I was determined to ignore the family drama and just focus on my own life. I've been adjusting well to my new place and actually made some solid friends at my new roommate's game night. It's been a relief to have people around who don't think I need to justify my relationship or apologize for my existence. Life was good for a few days until I got a message from an unknown number. It was my sister's new boyfriend. Apparently, she gave him my number, and he decided to take matters into his own hands. He opened with, Hey, this is Brad. I know this is a weird situation, but could we grab coffee and clear the air? I swear, I could feel my eye twitching. I have no idea why, but I decided to say yes, mainly to put an end to this mythical boyfriend saga once and for all. Also, I was morbidly curious about the kind of guy who could tolerate my sister for more than five minutes. We met up yesterday, and honestly it was. Bizarre. Brad is like the polar opposite of what I expected polite, seems genuinely smart, and clearly has no idea what he's gotten himself into with my sister. He started off very diplomatic, saying he wanted to hear my side, because my sister had been telling him confusing things. I could tell he was trying hard to stay neutral, but it didn't take long for him to slip up. He asked, So? Is your boyfriend real? With this hesitant smile, like he wasn't sure if he was in the middle of a prank. I just laughed couldn't help it and said, yes, he's real. But no, he's not meeting you to prove it. Brad looked confused, like I just threw a wrench into his whole understanding of my family's dynamic. He then admitted my sister had told him some interesting things. Namely, that I had always been jealous of her and made up unbelievable stories to one-up her. I couldn't tell if I wanted to laugh, cry, or punch a wall. I told Brad a very edited version of the truth. I said I overheard my sister and friend saying some cruel things, and it led to me needing some distance. I didn't get into specifics, but it seemed to register with him. After a while, he shook his head and said, I just don't know if I can deal with all of this. He thanked me for meeting up and then added, almost under his breath, I don't know how you do it. The kicker? Later that night, I got a text from my sister. A long one basically accusing me of planting seeds of doubt in Brad's mind and saying that if her relationship goes south, it's all on me. She said, I hope you're happy ruining my life, just like you always have. I'm honestly beyond words. It feels like I'm living in a soap opera where my family can't see me as an actual person, just some convenient target for their bitterness and jealousy. My parents, predictably, are blowing up my phone again, saying, can't you just make peace with your sister? But after this latest episode, I'm realizing just how far apart we are and how they don't really see me at all. I don't even know what I'll do if Brad actually breaks up with her. Part of me thinks that's inevitable, but I know I'm going to get blamed if it happens. Meanwhile, my boyfriend's been trying to keep things light, joking that he's going to buy a mythical boyfriend t-shirt to wear around the apartment. I told him I'd take one too, but here I am, just waiting for the next dramatic twist, because if I've learned anything, it's that my family isn't capable of keeping things simple. I feel like I'm standing on a cliff edge, and any minute now, something's going to knock me right off. TLDR. Met with sister's boyfriend to prove my BF is real, sort of. And now she's accusing me of ruining her relationship. Family thinks I'm being stubborn. Just waiting for the next round of drama because it never ends. Update 4. So, after the whole coffee showdown with Brad, I figured things would either calm down or just go silent. Boy, was I wrong. Two days later, I got an email from my parents inviting me to family dinner. They specifically said it was to clear the air and suggested I bring my boyfriend, almost like it was some bizarre olive branch. Against my better judgment, I decided to go partly out of hope that maybe, just maybe, we could settle things. Plus, my boyfriend agreed to come, and I thought, at least I'll have backup. We showed up, 
and the atmosphere was as tense as I expected. My sister was already glaring at me when I walked in, like she'd been rehearsing it. The whole setup felt staged like an intervention, but for what, I wasn't sure. My dad started by saying that he and mom had thought long and hard about what had been happening between me and my sister. He went on to say that family is the most important thing and that I should be the bigger person and apologize to my sister. For what? Who knows? I looked over at my sister, who had this smug, self-satisfied look on her face, as if she'd already won. I glanced at my boyfriend, who looked back at me with a calm, reassuring expression, and I realized I was done tiptoeing around these people. So, I just went for it. I started by calmly saying I wasn't apologizing for needing boundaries. I told them I overheard everything my sister and friends said about me, and that their words hurt more than they'd ever realize. I explained, in a very matter-of-fact tone, that I wasn't ashamed of my life, my job, or my relationship, and that I wasn't going to keep pretending that their treatment of me was okay. Then I looked right at my sister and said, I'm sorry your life isn't where you want it to be, but I'm done being your punching bag for it. My sister looked stunned, like she'd expected me to back down, and for a second, I thought she might actually apologize. But then she went off, practically yelling about how I owe her for all the things she's done for me over the years. She started listing them stuff like sharing her clothes and letting me tag along when we were kids. She even brought up some old, irrelevant incident from middle school. At this point, it was clear that no amount of reasoning was going to get through to her. My parents, of course, stayed silent. Then, out of nowhere, Brad, her boyfriend, chimes in. He had come along with her, probably because she thought she needed reinforcements. But instead, he looks at her, all serious, and says, Honestly, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't know why you're so obsessed with your sister's relationship. Maybe if you put this much energy into your own life, things would be different. My sister's face turned bright red. She looked at him like he'd slapped her. And then he said, I think it's best if we go our separate ways. Cue total chaos. My sister started screaming at him, accusing him of betraying her and siding with the enemy. And then she turned on me, calling me every name in the book. My parents started telling me to stop antagonizing her. And my dad even said, Look at what you're doing to the family. That's when I realized I was never going to win with them. No matter what happened, I'd always be the villain if I dared to stand up for myself. So I stood up, took my boyfriend's hand and said, I'm done with all of you. I told them I was cutting off contact until they could treat me with respect. My dad started spluttering. My mom looked shocked and my sister just kept yelling. But I felt this incredible calm wash over me. For the first time, I wasn't scared of losing their approval or worried about the guilt trips. I was free. I walked out with my boyfriend, feeling lighter than I have in years. It's been a few weeks now. My parents and sister tried reaching out emails, voicemails, the works but I haven't responded. I'm finally living my life without the constant judgment, and it's a feeling I didn't even know was possible. My boyfriend and I have been planning a little getaway to celebrate this new chapter, and my new friends from the game nights threw me a freedom party. I feel like I finally have people in my life who see me for who I am. So yeah. I guess that's the end of this chapter. Who knows what'll happen with my family down the line, but for now, I'm putting myself first. TLDR, family dinner turned into an ambush. Sister lost her boyfriend after he called her out. I cut ties with my family and finally feel free. 